Uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Um, it's a joy to be among uh, so many Aarhus Convention uh, activists. Um, I'm particularly uh, honored by uh, the presence of Professor Ebeson, the chair of the Aarhus Compliance Committee, which is uh, a very strange example of a body whose decisions are not binding, but but extremely influential and impactful. So it is a beacon of hope in, a very, in very difficult times for environmental law and for the environment itself. So I'll, uh, we, have, we have submitted a report which we will present uh, on Wednesday. So I'll make uh, a few uh, very quick remarks uh, in order to stay within the time limits. Uh, a few, first, a few general remarks and then a few specific remarks about Greece. All the remarks refer to Greece, but I think that many, all of you will recognize that they are applicable also to your countries, to one extent or another. First of all, let me state that public health is not outside the ambit of the Arcus Convention. The Convention states very clearly that environmental information might refer to public health, insofar as it is affected by factors of the environment. Is COVID-19 uh, affected by factors of the environment? Well, I'm not a specialist, but I think it is. For example, there are studies from Italy and the United States that show that morbidity from COVID-19 depends to some extent on air quality. Second, uh, as we know from, for example, from the Universal uh, Declaration of Human Rights and from our work, human rights are interconnected, indivisible, are inseparable. Uh, and the framers of the Aarhus Convention knew that very well when they, they, they stated in the preamble that uh, environmental rights are essential to the enjoyment of all human rights. Therefore, let us not pretend that environmental rights are intact whenever the freedom of movement or the freedom of assembly is restricted, as it is restricted during the pandemic. Third remark, there is another right uh, which is not very well known uh, and it's not very glamorous, but it is protected, for example, by the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union, which is called the right to a good administration. It's a right which is essential to the Arcus Convention. The Arcus Convention does not make sense without it. Uh, in Greece, uh, the problem is that public administ administration is dealing only with COVID-19. Uh, during 20, 2020, the administrative state has all but collapsed. Uh, now it is recovering slowly by slowly, but I mean, if you see the list of all the decrees and the decisions that come out, everything deals with COVID-19. Now, this is not only an environmental problem. If you had an education or a social services activist in front of you, he would, he would say the same thing, but it is a problem. I mean, nothing uh, operates as it should. Finally, let me point out that there is no possibility for derogation in the Arcus Convention. Yes, we are living through an emergency, but there is no derogation as there is in other uh, uh, treaties, for example, the European Convention on Human Rights. Not only that, but uh, as another treaty, the Vienna Convention on, on the Interpretation of Treaty States, it is not possible for one state to rely on its internal legal order uh, for its failure to implement another, an international treaty, in this case, the Arcus Convention. Now, let me, let me proceed to the, some specific examples of how the, the, the rule of law has been eroded in Greece. Um, the, I mean, we, we have, we'll, we'll present a report on Wednesday, but let me state just, just four, four, four typical examples. 
First of all, uh, we have many examples of legal provisions uh, that, ex that uh, allow projects which have no environmental permit or projects whose the environmental permit has expired to continue to operate. For example, hotels or uh, quarries. This is a big problem, uh, an Arhus Convention problem, because as you can understand, the principle of precaution, uh, public participation, and, uh, and public participation uh, are not valid anymore. Second, uh, we have a general undermining of environmental regulations. For example, I can mention uh, regulations concerning dam safety, a very important uh, issue which affects also human safety, not just the environment, or uh, the, the regulations that have to do with the siting of chemical uh, substance warehouses, also, also a human safety problem. A third example is the adoption of plants without public participation by a special provision uh, by law. Uh, I can mention several urban planning, uh, urban plans. Uh, I can mention the recent uh, plan for the management of the radio radioactive wastes in Greece. So these are not uh, um, light issues from the environmental point of view. Finally, there is this class of problems which belongs to the, uh, which can be described in general as the erosion of, uh, of the rule of law, of the environmental rule of law in general. Here, I can mention the, an, a, a tree, an, an, international, a, 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 an investment state treaty that the Greek state has signed with a Canadian mining company called Hellenic Gold. Uh, which is responsible for a gold mine in northern Greece. There, among other things, the Greek state has agreed that the environmental, the environmental impact of the activities of the said company will not be controlled by the public administration, that is, the Greek, the, the Greek environmental inspectors, but by a private body which, which will be appointed partly by the company itself. I mean, I do not have to tell you uh, the bias and the conflict of interest that is hidden in this, uh, in this provision. Finally, let me mention the environmental problems that the pandemic has caused. First of all, the so-called green public procurement, which, has, which, is, uh, um, which is part of the EU laws on public procurement, uh, is suspended, basically, because all public procurement takes place by emergency procedures. Finally, and uh, let me finish with that, uh, I would like to mention the medical waste problem that is facing Greece, and probably uh, all of the countries that participate today here, and those who do not participate. Um, for some reason, uh, not many people in the European community and in our administration talk about this, but sooner or later we'll have to face the consequences. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. I will be happy to answer any questions you have.